right now at 8. A break from the cold. Finally, temperatures in the 40s with plenty of sunshine to kick off your weekend. We're getting a little spoiled, but uh, is it going to last? Meteorologist Mark Strahl, he's going to break it all down. Coming up in a minute here. Plus, a CTA bus is caught in the crossfire. We're going to tell you how a 13-year-old boy got hurt in the chaos. And a Fox 32 exclusive. This is a one-on-one -on -one interview with a former suburban cheer coach. Apparently, a text message got her fired, but now she's firing back with claims of sexual harassment. Also, the largest township in Illinois is giving away thousands of toys and food baskets this holiday season. We'll have a live interview just ahead of the big event. That's a little bit later in the show. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining me on Good Day Saturday. I'm Jenny Mokowski. We are going to start this morning with some breaking news. One person was hurt after a car crashed into a Burger King on the west side. Now, officials say a 29-year-old man was driving when a car cut him off. He lost control in the 3900 block of West Chicago. Police say the man's car hit a person, then crashed into that Burger King. The 36-year-old pedestrian was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police did not issue any tickets. Now, also breaking overnight, a fire at a downtown high rise that happened at Ontario and State at a building known as the Ontario Place. Flames could be seen shooting out of one of the units. Crews immediately responded. We're waiting to hear if there were any injuries and how that fire started. A 13 year old caught in the middle of gunfire while riding a CTA bus is expected to survive. Police say two people started fighting at a gas station in the 7800 block of South Ashland Friday afternoon. A third person pulled a gun, started shooting, first hit a 28-year-old man in the ankle. The shooter then fired shots in the direction of that CTA bus. 13-year-old on board was shot in the neck. He was rushed to Comer Children's Hospital for surgery. He was working and then they just started screaming, they shooting, they shooting. People was laying all on the, on the ground and everything. So far, police don't have anyone in custody. They say neither, the vic neither of the victims were the intended target. A driver's decision to beat a freight train ends in tragedy. Police say the driver went around the gates when the train was approaching and did not make it. It happened early yesterday morning in Melrose Park. The driver was hurt. The passenger, Jocelyn Morales, was killed. It's hard. I, I, still, can't, I still can't sink in that my baby's gone. Thank you. And then she's... She's not coming home, and that she won't be here for Christmas. That this is my, my firstborn. My We're working on finding out the condition of the driver. Now to a Fox 32 exclusive. A fire cheerleading coach is speaking out after she lost her job for texting a student. After deliberating behind closed doors for four hours this week, the District 230 School Board fired Bridget Guzior, citing this text that you see there as the reason to let the Stag High School cheer coach go. The district says she violated school policy when she sent that text message to an athlete, which included some profanity. Guzior said she sent the message to the athlete and a parent and that she didn't know the policy. She was suspended back in August. That's when she filed a complaint against her former boss, the athletic director, alleging years of sexual harassment. Guzior claims her firing is a retaliation for that. When this all happened, I decided that it would probably be easier for me to stay quiet and walk away and settle with district and walk away. But I would not be the coach that I am if I did that. My kids the Illinois Department of Human Rights is investigating the complaints against the, the athletic director. A school spokesperson says they're also investigating the claims of sexual harassment. Now to a shakeup at the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. Kim Fox ran on a message of reform, but last night one of her top aides resigned after Fox 32 raised questions about money paid to a law firm. Our Larry Yellen broke that story. State's attorney Kim Fox accepted the resignation of Shaka Patterson, who she herself had brought on board from the prominent law firm of Jones Day to run her Civil Actions Bureau. Patterson supervised the 80 or so state's attorneys who handle civil litigation. Six weeks ago, we requested records showing... The sentence is life in prison for a suburban woman who killed her seven-year-old son and a five-year-old girl she was babysitting. Elżbieta Platskowska was sentenced without the possibility of parole. Platskowska stabbed the children and two dogs to death in her home in Naperville back in 2012. Prosecutors called it a brutal, senseless murder and said it was an extremely emotional case to prosecute. 
The FBI is looking for a bank robber who's been busy. He has hit four different banks since Wednesday. So he robbed two Chase branches in the loop yesterday morning. Also a U.S. bank branch in Austin that happened on Thursday and a fifth third branch in the South Loop on Wednesday. Take a close look. If you recognize him, please call the FBI. The GOP seems to have the votes to pass the latest version of their tax bill and hopes to send it to President Trump's desk by Christmas. Here are some of the details of this latest version. The top's top tax bracket for the wealthiest Americans goes down to 37 percent. The corporate rate is lowered from 35 to 21 percent. The bill does retain a deduction for medical expenses. It also keeps the exemption for graduate school tuition waivers. The child tax credit was expanded in this latest version. It would also eliminate Obamacare's requirement that Americans must buy health insurance. But the popular deduction for state and local taxes used by many of you in Illinois will be capped at 10,000 bucks. Some experts predict that could trigger a 10% decline in home values in higher priced neighborhoods where those sales are already soft. Disputing that is Congressman Peter Roskam. The Republican represents DuPage County where 78% of homeowners have used that local tax deduction. Home values track with economic activity historically. As the economy grows and expands, home values increase. There's just no question about it. Representative Roskam predicted passage of the tax plan would lead to 37,000 new jobs across Illinois. The exact impact on the deficit still not known. However, the earlier tax bill versions passed by the House and Senate each added more than a trillion dollars to the deficit. If you're planning on flying through O'Hare for the holidays, a possible strike could put a kink in your plans. Restaurant and concession workers have voted to go on strike. So they've been out of, without a contract since August. They want more affordable health insurance and they want higher wages. Both sides actually met on Thursday, but the union says they're still really far apart on all those key issues and a strike could happen at any time. So speaking of travel, you may want to avoid the roads next Thursday night. Jot that down. AAA says that will be the peak time for holiday traffic. The hours between 4 and 6 p.m. will be the busiest. That's when you combine holiday travelers plus your rush hour commuters. Nationwide, more than 107 million people are expected to travel between next week and New Year's. That would set yet another new record. It's 834. You're watching Good Day Saturday, of course. The date is set for the royal wedding, but oh, it's causing some conflicts for Prince Harry's best man. I've got those details coming up next. Plus, Alexa making some headlines for her potty mouth. Ooh, foul. The surprising bad language recorded during a kid's game on Amazon's Home Assistant. Stay with us.